Welcome to Supply Chain Now, the voice of global supply chain. Supply Chain Now focuses on the best in the business for our worldwide audience, the people, the technologies, the best practices, and today's critical issues, the challenges and opportunities. Stay tuned to hear from those making global business happen right here on Supply Chain Now. Hey, good morning, everybody. Scott Luton and Enrique Alvarez with you here on Supply Chain Now. Welcome to today's show. Enrique, how are you doing? Hey, Scott, how are you doing? It's great. Always a pleasure being here with you and your interesting guests. Well, you know, you hit the nail on the head. We have a fantastic guest. Uh, what uh, I deem a supply chain rock and roll star with us here today. And uh, by the way, Enrique, I love the great work you're doing on so many fronts, all that embody your logistics with purpose mentality. It's who you are. And along those lines, speaking of wonderful work for the greater good, today we're speaking with uh, the leader of an organization on a mission to close the need gap. So with no further ado, I want to welcome in Romaine Seguin, CEO of Good360. Romaine, how you doing? Oh, great, Scott. It's so good to see you. You know, and I still owe you high barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to take you up. I'm going to take you up on it as soon as you get back. Honestly, to I'll be in Atlanta October at two different times, maybe sooner. Oh, man. Wonderful. We can talk uh, good barbecue. And by that time, football, really bad football in Atlanta in terms of the pros, but uh, save that for another day. Um, so, Romaine, uh, I know you and Enrique already know each other. Uh, we're all, we're, we're, we have been longtime big fans of Good360. We're going to dive into more into that story, all the really good things that you're doing there, you and the team. But for starters, Enrique, we want to learn more about kind of Romaine's, where she grew up and her upbringing. So, Romaine, fill us in. What do you call your hometown? And uh, give us some up, uh, anecdotes about your upbringing. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, um, the gateway to the West. And uh, I'm the oldest of five children. Um, my father finished high school. My mother finished 10th grade. So when I was in high school, I came home. I was, I was brought up Catholic. I still am. It was during Lent. The only reason I remember that because we were having peanut butter and toast um, <laughs> on, a, on a Friday. Um, and I told them I was going to college and they looked at me and they go, why? I go, because I can continue to pitch a softball and hit a volleyball. So I looked at them, I go, by the way, you don't have to pay anything. So I was very blessed and fortunate to get education by throwing a softball, hitting a volleyball at William Woods University. I did not pay a dime for books. Wow. I did not pay a dime for room and board. And I did not pay a dime for my education. Wow. Full, full circle come around. Um, I am a board of trustee at William Woods University. I'm the chair. And I recently just hired our 13th president, Dr. Moreland. Um, he's 13th president of a 152-year-old uh, institution. So it was a great experience. Um, I always tell people to challenge their inner soul of something they've never done before. Mm, mm. So, so that... That is yeah. William Woods University in Fulton, Missouri. Yes. And what is the mascot, Romaine? An owl. An owl. Okay. <laughs> good, good, good. The, the hard-hitting questions here at Supply Chain Now. And really quick, <laughs> um, were you better at softball or volleyball? Softball. softball. I was a pitcher. I taught myself a knuckleball. If I had a softball, I could show you. Um, and I could have the same motion, but it'd take like 10 to 15 miles wow. off. But, and that was my strikeout pitch. Wow. Okay, man, we're gonna have to compare notes. Um, I've got three kids. Two of them have been playing softball. We're getting back into them now. Now that you know, the world's getting back together, so we know who to go to for a strikeout pitch. But you were hey, about Scott, to Scott. And seriously, I would encourage your, your daughters to stay in softball. And and why I think it's so important, especially with females, it gives them confidence. It gives them mm. confidence to sit at a table with whatever decisions being made. So whatever you can do to encourage them, um, please do so. Mm, I, it I sounds like you were that. very good at it too, right, Romaine? Um, I, I was pretty darn good. How, was, <laughs> how fast could you uh, throw? I could pitch it, you know, you see them throw it now anywhere from 68, 72. I could get mine up to 65. Mm. Um, that was as fast as I could pitch. But like I said, my change up was my strikeout pitch. That way it was just a pump. And I just got done watching the College World Series with Oklahoma just smacking Texas. I mean, Oklahoma had a great team. 
You're right. They sure did. I think they set records with home runs, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they did. They, they, runs, home runs, everything. But mm. that gal from Hawaii, JoLynn, Joel something, she was fantastic. Mm. Um, so you are about to, cont- uh, so uh, again, the big shout out to William Woods University and their new 13th president of all time. So that that's really cool. Um, quick question, go back to food and growing up in, in St. Louis, what's, what's one food dish that would be inseparable maybe from your, your childhood? Bar none. And this is a big argument with Chicagoans <laughs> and St. Louis. It's the pizza. Mm-hmm. I mean, eat, Amos pizza. I mean, I'm a pizza freak anyway, but there's nothing. When I go home, as the first thing I have is pizza. You can't. But now you can order it. There's this pot, uh, uh, gold belly that you can get different foods around the country. And when I was in Atlanta, I ordered four emo pizzas. <laughs> and was it was it as almost as good as it is oh, in person? Almost as good. I okay. mean, it was. It so, was. Hey, shout out to our friends at Gold Belly, who's uh, powering the supply chain of foods you Absolutely. can't get locally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So before we talk about a role model or two, anything else when it comes to your upbringing that was really special that you'd like to share here? You know, my mom and dad taught me to be very humble. My father was a high school janitor. And, you know, Scott, we were poor. I, did, I didn't know I was poor. Mm-hmm. I mean, my, my mom and dad loved, loved all of us so much. And a testament to my father is he died young. Um, Mm -hmm. He died six months after he retired. He was 62 as a high school janitor. And I was in charge of setting up the seal arrangements. And it was during when it was Good Friday, everything that you could imagine going wrong in a Catholic upbringing. So everything said, and over 500 people showed up. Wow. And it was admins, former students. The guy comes and finds me. And then the next day he had to pick up four tra- trash bags of beer cans. So he wasn't really happy about that. So he charged me another $50 for cleanup. And I said, sir, this is the best $50 of investment I'll be spending with you. So mm. that's, I'll just give that a little shout out because mm. it's, it, it, you know, it was a testament to my father, how he brought, and my mother, how they brought us up to be just very humble. Mm. Wow. Uh, Enrique, that is really special. Uh, and the power of humility, uh, that's a, a key trait, I think, of the most successful leaders. Um, Enrique, why don't you comment there? And I'm going to ask uh, a couple more questions, Romain, before I turn it over to you. Yeah, no, I feel like it's, uh, I mean, you had, it sounds like you had great, great uh, examples uh, mm-hmm. with your parents and your dad in particular. Uh, I can't imagine having 500 people show up, right, at any of the events that I'm probably going to be organizing anytime soon. So it's just, uh, as you said, a big testament of how good of a person he was, very well-rounded event uh, for sure. And and I'm sure that he passed on a lot of those things yeah. to mm-hmm. you. Any couple, of, maybe one in particular, do you think that you got from your dad that you want to share with us? Um, his sense of humor, um, one fourth of July, he, he was a cracker and this is funny. <laughs> he would put firecrackers in a Cisco can. <laughs> And he was a cigar <laughs> smoker and the ash dropped <laughs> and it went in the can and the firecracker started going off. He was running around like a jumping <laughs> bean and, um, and he just loved having fun. His sense of humor was just incredible. Uh, he just walked in a place and he, he just lit up the room because he always just was positive and had just a great sense of humor. I love that. Uh, and back to uh, the custodian, you know, um, Willie and Mac were our elementary school custodians, and they had such a deep impact on everyone at Aiken Elementary uh, because they they were they were almost like coaches and and mentors. Mm-hmm. But then they could sing, and they would sing together. And whenever uh, sometimes our teachers would let them pop in and sing together, and that would always stick with me. So you, you never know where you're going to get inspiration and, 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 that just gave me goosebumps because mm. my father would always make sure the athletes would stay out of trouble he goes you can't be skipping this class son get your backside in that room <laughs> he'd always make sure the kids stayed out of trouble mm. um, and so i a testament to willie yeah absolutely uh, willie and his brother mac uh, two yeah. legends in aiken south carolina okay so um and by the way your dad's name your, your parents names were hubert and tamra Hubert and Tamara. Okay. Uh, well, um, rest in peace, uh, Hubert. Uh, gosh, 
uh, six months after retiring and, and, you know, you never know, there's a greater plan yeah. in play for sure. Um, all right. So Romaine, I want to shift gears a little bit. It sounds like I'd love to just dive in for a couple hours of your upbringing, but for the sake of time, let's talk about, uh, let's shift gears and talk about your professional background prior to your current role. Because as I alluded on the front end, you're a bit of a supply chain rock and roll star, yeah. right? You yeah. were leading supply chains before supply chain became cool. So tell us, uh, give us a little information about your uh, background. It was funny. I I answered an ad in the paper and um, I just graduated from college and I wasn't, I thought I was going to go and be a teacher. I was like half a semester of classes and then student teaching. So all year, all in a year away from getting my teacher certification. So I want to stay in shape. So I went and worked at EPS at 3.30 in the morning, started on loading trailers in Earth City, Missouri, which is a suburb of St. Louis. And within six weeks of the job, they so these guys come to my trailer and they go, come here. And I go, yes. They go, we want you to go into management. I go, I like doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm training here. Come on. <laughs> I go, oh, but this fuck, you don't get to do this. You're going to train anywhere from 10 to 12 people to unload and sort like you. And I'm like, okay, well, hindsight went to management. And I didn't know it. They they knew I had a degree. And I think that's when the pendulum started swinging at UPS. They wanted educated people. Not that that means everything. Trust me, I'm not saying that. But it was just the, the timing. And they found out I had a degree. And it was, and they were right. I had, they put me on a sort with the highest uh, seniority of Teamsters. And oh boy, that was that was fun. Let's put it <laughs> very fun. I a learned I, I learned the best swear words. Let's put it that. <laughs> <laughs> Great challenge too. Well, hey, I, I gotta I gotta get this this uh, comment in, uh, Romaine. I bet you could write a book uh, on just that segment of your career. You know, we've been watching the offer. I think it's mm-hmm. on Amazon. Have you seen this, Romaine and Enrique? I've read about no. Okay, so in a small nutshell, because it goes to that that Teamsters comment, it's all about the uh, making of the movie The Godfather and oh. everything that had to happen. Uh, mountains were being moved to uh, finally, you know, produce and and uh, roll out one of the greatest movies of all time. It is fascinating, must see TV. So so add that the offer to your things to watch. I got but, it written down. Okay, so remain. Um, you kind of talked there about your the, your start yeah, to your so career. I, yeah, and then I, I never said no to an opportunity. And uh, I moved nine times with UPS. Uh, my first time was overseas. I didn't even have a passport. <laughs> this wow. is 1989. Wow. I had to drive to Jeff City, which was the capital in Missouri, to get a sealed birth certificate, fly to Chicago. And that was back in the day when they could produce a passport in two day, in two hours. Right now, now we got to wait two months, and you can't go there and get it. Um, so it was different time, different era. Um, you know, and that was back. There was no internet, no Skype, no no nothing. I mean, when I left, my parents were going, "Where are you going?" <laughs> I was twenty eight years old. I go, "I'm going to go across the pond and work for UPS." We acquired twelve companies in late eighty eight. And I was supposed to be there six months and then about being five years. And then the rest of the wow. week, I just started getting promoted. I, I knew a lot about finances and, and uh, I spent a lot of time in operations. So I was very blessed and fortunate to work for UPS. Great company. Mm. If you work hard and you treat people right, um, the sky's your limit, really. Mm. Well, you also mentioned there uh, two quick points and uh, I'm coming your way, Enrique. That combination, powerful combination of operations and uh, knowing finance. I mean, if you've got those two things, gosh, the world is your oyster. And then, but secondly, you're very humble. Uh, clearly, uh, 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 Hubert and Tamara did a great job. You Thank became you. one of the presidents uh, yeah. at the UPS organization. So you hit the, the, the highest echelons. Yes, I was very fortunate and blessed. And uh, I never took myself for granted or serious. Um, you know, I, I was no different than the individual that cleaned my office. The only mm-hmm. difference is I might have put my right shoe on first and he or she might have put their left shoe on first. That would have been the only difference, mm-hmm. you know? I love it. Love it. Okay. There's so much more there, but but we got we got an equally as uh, interesting uh, aspect of the story here with Good360. So Enrique, where are we going next? Yeah. So before we dive into what Good360 is, so the people that are listening to us now understand a bit more about the amazing organization that you're currently leading. 
What was the little shift from UPS being the present to a non-profit to an organization that's 100% purpose-driven? How do you do that and why, yeah. I guess? It, great question, first of all. And, and I'm a firm believer in everything. So my last two years at UPS was during COVID. And I know this is going to sound strange, but it was the best two years of my career. Why? It was bigger than any of us. It was bigger than our shield because we truly thought we were keeping the world moving by getting PPE equipment in folks' hands, by delivering the vaccines. I got to know employees better switching to Zoom than I ever have had in my career um, at any level. And it was just amazing. It was that was the hardest thing to do, leaving UPS with people. But I got a call, right? I was I thought I was going to retire at the end of 2021, 20, 22. I didn't know what year. And out of the blue, I get a call from these two individuals. I, I didn't know who they were, John Gruden and Maria uh, uh, Martinez. And they go, we are on the board of Good 360, and we are part of the search committee. And your names come up. We're looking for someone. Um, to take over the helm as CEO. And I knew Good360 a bit, but I didn't know nowhere near the capacity of the amount of incredible work they do. So I started researching and I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll throw my name in, out there. And so I went through the process and I was selected. And I started March 1 and I, I couldn't be at a better place of what I went through the last years at UPS from totally humanitarian, although, you know, we're a public traded company, y'all all all know that, but our business, you know, what we are doing of moving stuff around the world to keep the world moving. I really felt the purpose then. And I, and the employees felt the purpose. And it was, it was, it wasn't, it was an easy switch from what I went through. And uh, it's just, it's it's just another step. It sounds like you're the perfect fit for the organization. And of course, uh, you're right. I think that coronavirus came and made all of us a little bit more humble and uh, maybe even a little bit more appreciative of what we have and what we need to do to help our community and, our, and the world. So before we deep dive into what Good360 is, could you give us a little bit more explanation as of what the organization does? When was it founded? What are you guys yeah. so stand for? Surprising. Here's what's surprising. And everyone I talk to, they're like, what? So we'll be 38 years old in November. 14th largest nonprofit wow. company, according to Forbes, hmm. that was 2020. When the 2021 comes out, we'll probably be in the top 10. And Forbes based their rankings of nonprofits like United Way's number one on fair market value. So United Way is like 3.4 billion. Um, and we came in like right at a billion when we were uh, number 14. So we'll jump up. A, a few places when in 2021. We just finished our financials. And so now we're uh, filling out the 990 form. Uh, so again, 38 years old in November. And you're like, why does the people know Good360? Right. I mean, why? I mean, I don't, I, <laughs> right. And it comes down to this, you okay? We are a B2B company. We're not a beat of, beat of the end user. We allow our nonprofits to be the end user. But what we're doing is partnering with, and, you know, I'll give you some examples uh, as we go on. We're strategically partnering with our large donors on how can we co-brand? How can we get known? Just, just think, probably 10 years ago, you didn't know Feeding America. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're mentioned in, the Disney's ESG report, and I can say their name because it's out on the site. Three names are mentioned. UNICEF, American Red Cross, and Good360. Wow. So I adjunct, you're going to like this, Scott. I adjunct at Darla Moore um, International Business School of South Carolina. That's right. That's right. So I was oh, by, uh, by the way, by the way, and, and um, you know, that, that is my alma mater. And their supply chain program at uh, USC, the East Coast USC, just came in. Gartner ranked them either number two or number three. Fantastic. They have have come a long way. Uh, And a lot of folks, I think, kind of like Good360, 
doing massive great work, but kind of under, you know, not right. visible enough. And right. Romaine, to add to your a list of um, uh, recognition or, or third party validation, Good360 is by Charity Navigator, which is probably the foremost mm-hmm. uh, credentialing organization. Four out of four stars. Yeah. Give with confidence, they say. But you, you, as you were saying, Romaine. Yeah, so... I said to the students, I had two different classes that day. One, I had 27, one, I had 19. So I was telling them about the 360, the transition from a corporate running, you know, Wall Street controlled to a nonprofit, you know, what's the spectrums on that? So I, I, I said, raise your hand if you know UNICEF and give me three words about it. Right. They help hunger, they're global. I mean, they were going global. Raise your hand, American Red Cross. They're there in disaster. Right. They collect blood. I mean, they're just going. I go, okay, good 360 in both classes. And these are educated folks, remind you. 27, 19. Yeah. And that was my third week into the job. I already committed that I would uh, teach there for a day. And I'm like, why are we not knowing? So now I'm more into it. And it's, I find it's a B2B model. We got to strategically partner with, I mean, we got some fantastic donors, corporate donors that everyone knows their name. Right. Could you, um, I just, I just could you share with us some of them? Yeah, yeah. I guess a couple others. It's on our website. So I have no problem. This is one Amazon, Walmart, Bed Bath and Beyond, um, Advanced Auto Parts. And you're probably going, why? Why Advanced? That's Auto? a big company, too. Yeah, but they, what we help them with is they don't throw parts in landfills and we find strategic nonprofits that have vehicles that need parts. So, you know, so that, that was a win-win. Bombas, I love Bombas. I've known Bombas since the guys founded the company. Um, Mattel, um, you know, American Dow. So we have, you know, we have over 400 partners. and we can leverage together because they're getting a lot asked about their ESG, their environment of uh, substance uh, governance report. And, and it's, it's just the tidal wave now, y'all. I think the, the SEC, not the Southeast Conference, let's not get them confused. <laughs> <laughs> the Security Exchange Commission is starting to lay parameters for the ESG reporting. Um, I, I'm on a call tomorrow, and I know California is a little ahead, finding out how far ahead they are with requirements for doing business in the state of California. So I, I think there's an opportunity for us to partner to get our name more recognized. So that's that's what we're trying to do. So 38 years, um, we're based in Old Town, Alexandria. Um, you know, 65 employees. Um, we do some time uh, third party um, with different partners on warehousing, depending if it makes sense. Uh, but we really like to try to find nonprofits that have a bit of room because um, that's been a win-win for all. No, it's an amazing organization with very good partners. And uh, of course, you're very humble and you've always been, but you guys are literally changing the world and helping so many communities out there that it's really refreshing and inspiring. So thank you and the whole team. And uh, something I'm really passionate about is just culture and speaking a little bit about your team. What what makes Good360 such a vibrant place to work? I mean, in your time that you've been with them, what what makes it unique? And, and, and I guess it, broadening that question, what makes a good team uh, successful. Yeah, so being around 38 years, um, we, we do have uh, someone there has been 25 years. Um, but I would say we have probably 16% of our people who have been there more than 10 years. And then you got from 10 to 5, about 20%. The rest is less than 5. And here's what I, I found surprising when I went there. The number of folks that want to come to work for nonprofits, that, that's just a different, the, the, the folks that's coming up through college now, they have a different mindset. 
They demand more what an employer does. They demand more of how you treat communities. They demand more how you're going to treat the environment. That's the given. They demand more on how you, how you fiscally report. I mean, they all are about fairness and equity across all perspectives. Um, and I, I found that, I'm like, really? People want to come work for nonprofit. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that's a bad right. thing. Right, I mean, no, you're right. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then I started digging into it. You know, we don't pay top dollar, obviously. I mean, pay's okay. I mean, um, for a nonprofit, but we get them involved with a lot of different parts of Good 360. Um, we let, it, you know, some of them are right, right with our donors. Um, we have volunteer events. We have, uh, uh, we have VTO, and I love that. A lot of companies don't have that volunteer time off. I was about yeah. to ask. So VTO, yeah. volunteer time off, that's a new acronym yeah. for me. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I encourage it, applaud it. Um, obviously, it's easy with our, organi- our organization because we work with so many nonprofits. Right. So the culture is, you know, really finding the nonprofit that can really serve that right individual. Um, and it's everyone wants to do the right thing. Mm, right. I love that. Hey, Romaine. Me and you got to get got to help Enrique out and give him a chance to pick up the pin he just dropped on the floor. He's a, <laughs> well, he's a, I didn't think that you guys a, noticed. He's All a right. remain. He's a fast All and right. furious note taker. Everywhere Enrique goes, he takes a uh, a, a, a bound notebook of all of his key learnings from every conversation. And I know he's going to have seven pages from this one. So I want to make sure you're well. I can't can't believe you heard it and then recognized that it was the pen dropping. I'm super (laughs) impressed with you, Scott. Uh, So am I. (laughs) I was trying to pick it up with my feet. and I'm like, I'll forget about it. Oh, no. I I know that you're just killing you. All right. So Romaine just kind of wrapped on some really special things as it relates to culture and team. And and I love what she ended there with Enrique. Yeah. Everyone wants to do the right thing, right? And you can feel that it's, it's palpable when you're on a team that's that's built like that with that type of kindred spirits. It truly is palpable, mm-hmm. palpable and can guide you hour to hour in your in your day. So Enrique, what um where are we going next with Romaine? Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about your uh, role as CEO. You come in, you have a long experience in corporate America. You come in, what are your priorities? What's the organizational goals for you, not only this year after the very two challenging years that we have all experienced? Um, what's um, What are your priorities? Yeah, so one I just named is really co-branding with key donors to to have good 360, at least, so at least five kids can raise their hand and say they know good 360. I mean, I need to go. I mean, come on people. We, we got to get our name out there. Um, data management. You know what I mean by that? We're, we're working with different systems now, you know, the key to, to working with a corporate donor is understanding their mission, whether it's bed, bath and beyond who's a partner with us that wants to serve Women, nonprofits, whether it's battered women, whether it's uh, women needing financial help, so forth. So the more data we can t- give them to help them make decisions in their board meetings or whatever, I truly believe we'll get more support because every organization has their niche on who they want to serve when they give dollars from their foundation. I mean, I, I certainly know yes does, you know, so... Right. So we're working on on, on getting is it, the the data is there, but in a more organized way to tell the story in their board reports, in their executive leadership reports, um, so they can really say yes, we're ma- we're matching up with our mission, our you know of our organization. And that that's one. The brandings too, and then really uh, people development especially with the the type of talent we have coming out of college. And I, and I told them, I said, whether you're going to be with Good 360 for 10 years, two years, A, you should have the best experience ever. And when you go to another organization, ask them about pe- their people right. development process. So, I'll, you know, I brought that from, you know, my experience at EPS and they absolutely loved it. Um, so those are my three immediate um, goals just coming in. Um, after that, it's really working the network, which, um, 
it, it could be complex for a lot of folks, but that's what I grew up in. And so it's network, network, ne- network. So um, that's right behind those three. Yeah. You know, it, it has a lot in common, Enrique, those three priorities right. with uh, uh, global supply chain. You know, we're seeing uh, a time where folks are branding and marketing their supply chain prowess unlike ever before. It's a little different, good, good 360, but similar. Uh, of course, uh, data and the power of data and how can we leverage it in a, in a instantaneous, um, but, but uh, instantaneous, but also selecting the right signals and not all the noise, right? Um, and putting all that data uh, at fingers at the fingertips of folks that are making decisions so they can make, make them timely and, and, and also solid, dis- uh, informed decision-making. And then, of course, people development. And Enrique, I know uh, uh, that's really a, a big um, part of your approach, right? Giving folks opportunities, uh, helping them to find skill sets that they may or may not know they have, and then you know fine tune them. But uh, what's your reaction to those three parties, Enrique? Yeah, no, I think uh, you're absolutely right, Scott. I think that these are the. I mean, if you were to ask ten CEOs, I think those three top topics would come around. Uh, over and over, right? Just people development, which I think it's incredibly important right now, especially as Romaine, you were saying that uh, there's a lot of people that uh, that are driven by purpose, right? Yeah. They're, they yeah, they want to do the right thing, right? They're not only chasing whatever job is going to pay them the more amount of money, right? So it's uh, so I think if, if you have people that are caring and purpose driven, then you have to match it with some people development, giving them opportunities to grow, the ones that you've had yourself. And then data, yeah, that's that's something we've seen over and over, right, Scott? It's everyone's investing a lot of money into technology, uh, tracking, tracing. Uh, it's no longer why. It's no longer right. why. It's how do I do it? It's no longer right. why I need visibility. It's how do I get it? Um, and the easier the data flows, especially with the partners that you have, like the Bombas Mattel of the world, then the easier it will be for them to continue supporting Good 360. And, and I think, yeah, this is... Definitely something a lot of companies are going through right now. Excellent point. Okay, so Romain, thank you for sharing. By the way, uh, this this is this is as good. Uh, I knew I was looking forward to a great conversation here today, and you're surpassing that bar. It's a good uh, masterclass for all. It of is us, a masterclass. Right? Yes, I mean, thank again, you. I'm taking a lot of notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <laughs> let's switch gears for a minute, uh, and I want to talk about. Um, going back to you know all your time at UPS prior to Good 360, you called it bigger than the shield. I love that phrase, by the way. Um, so, given you know, your your expertise, uh, international supply chain expertise, what's one aspect of the industry today that you find most intriguing? I find it that the networks keep changing. Um, it used to just be one simple simple network. And now you're starting to see partners, whether it's a nonprofit or profit world, that are looking to partner with networks in the supply chain. That you, do you have to control the whole supply chain or can you partner with someone that's really good in whatever area that you want to go to market? That would have never happened probably 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I think expense, expense on assets driven it. Uh, certainly, the you know the pandemic we're coming out. People are thinking differently on how you do your network, how you move goods. Is there a priority in goods? So the the, the other thing I, I want to say about the supply chain that it, that I think is very intriguing, and for all the listeners out there, the senior VP or the VP, whatever their title is, a supply chain, they're sitting right next to the CEO now. Mm-hmm. I, it, I'm telling you, I had to talk to more CEOs during the two years during the pandemic than I ever had to in my life. I usually had, I'd go just to the supply chain and, and they go, can you get in front of my CEO with me? I go, absolutely. And it was, it was major companies that I was in front of. And sometimes they were, they were hot seat, you know, discussions. Um, but, you know, I can't change the ocean freight. <laughs> Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> can't prioritize you over another 10,000 40 foot containers. So, I mean, it just, it's really elevated it because of what we went through. Um, and, you know, it's just in time, I think people are starting to look at it, starting to question it. That used to be a big buzz phrase a decade ago. Yeah. Um, 
I think it's now more strategic partners, uh, more about people you work with, whether they're vendors, whether they're your employees. That wasn't like that 10 years ago. It's just in time, just in time, cut costs, cut costs, you know, and uh, I think it just kind of, it, it went full circle. Agreed. And, and on that partnership note, I think um, the amount of partnering and the willingness to partner with startups uh, today, even be the biggest of companies partnering with startups, 10 to 15 years ago, that also wasn't the case. It wasn't that same mm-hmm. appetite for whatever right. degree of risk that um, folks deem that is. So that's, a, you know, just in the last couple of minutes in your response to that question, uh, Romain, gosh, I've got tons of thoughts going through my uh, brain, but uh, Enrique, your quick comment on what you shared. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's about the people and the partnerships and uh, now are, again, slowly starting to think that just in time was a good idea, kind of like probably stretched too far mm-hmm. uh, to the point where if something happened, then we became the mess that we all experienced and continue to experience. There's still, it's way better, but there's still 30 vessels outside Long Beach, right? right. So there's, it's there's, not a hundred now, but uh, There's still. 29 outside 29. of Savannah today. Yeah. And that's Savannah. Yeah. I think that's an all-time record for the Savannah port. Yeah. Um, but the hits do keep on coming and they are going to keep coming uh, based on, you know, things aren't going to go back to what they were in 2018. Um you know, you take we take just one challenge we have the the computer chips. You know, it's starting now to impact the latest and greatest. You know, the the, the most powerful chips are now. Um, you know, uh, they go into some of the machines that power the most modern factories. You know, the lead time for those machines are getting bigger and bigger. Um, so, but global supply chain will persevere, and the best of the best and brightest across the globe are in the industry, and uh, that what is also what makes it to use your term remain one of the most intri- intriguing times ever to be in global supply chain. Um, okay, so I want to talk key Eureka moments. It's one of our favorite questions around here. So Romain, I bet you've got plenty to fill Enrique's uh, book he just held up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, over the last couple of years, especially as you touched on one of your favorite times because of the purpose and because of the mission that that not only at UPS, but now at Good360, What's been one Eureka moment from the last couple of years that really sticks with you? Um, when we were going through moving the PPE equipment, um, I got a call from FEMA March 23rd of 2020. And I work with FEMA in New Orleans and Miami. That's where I work at UPS. And it was easy because we were moving generators within a state or two. Well, when I got the call, they said, we have partnered with Airbridge, who was with partnered with the federal government to fund getting as much PPE equipment in this country. And I'm like, okay. So I picked my three best and brightest. And I said, you're, you're completely out of your job. I had procurement, I had operations, and I had uh, business development. And it was a cluster the first week. <laughs> it was where we some equipment around, but we soon got ourselves wrapped together. So that that quarter, typically we moved pre-pandemic, we moved 150 747 uh, freighters. And that holds about 100,000 uh, tons. And one quarter with PPE equipment, um, March, April, or, or April, May, June, to Q2, we moved 324 charts. Wow. So we were all working around the clock, and I still have this pen here, and my team was incredible. And I said, I want to give some the, uh, a pen to everyone who made this happen. And it says, saving the world one COVID call at a time, 2020. And it has a mask. It has UPS, a shield, and a laptop. Mm. And it was a time that... You know, we all could relate to it. I had a sister who's uh, who's a uh, heart nurse at a major hospital in St. Louis. She was washing her mask for three weeks because she mm-hmm. didn't have. It. You know, I had a kid on the team whose uh, brother was an ER doctor in uh, Austin. I mean, everyone had something. You know, whether they were going to the doctor, whether they're, whether they're working at a grocery store, our UPS drivers, the essential workers didn't sometimes didn't have the the equipment. And that was, when I think back at those days, I just, that it wasn't our shoe. 
It Mm. wasn't any one of us. It wasn't our CEO. It was about keeping the world moving Mm. by protecting them, whether they're a doctor, a nurse, a grocery store worker, a UPS driver, or or a postman. The world had to keep moving. You know, education, we are delivering laptops out the crazy bill. Um, You know, we teach homeschool kids going. So that, I will remember it like yesterday. Um, and, wow. and rightly so. No a lot mission. of unsung heroes, right? I mean, the uh, delivery drivers and all those people that were more than essential uh, to keep the world running, as you mentioned. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and bravely so, you know, absolutely. even, you know, we still don't have all the answers that all of us would like. And two years ago, we didn't. A year ago, we had even more uh, questions. Those folks just kept showing up, kept mm-hmm. delivering. And yeah. I love how, uh, organizations like yours at the time and probably Good 360 at the time as well, mm-hmm. equipped them, protected them, um, got stuff where it needed to be so that they could, to your point, remain, keep the world moving forward. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll switch to uh, Good 360. So we have a Omaha facility where we have several different models in, in Good 360. But one of the models is for your small nonprofits because small nonprofits can't get a, a full truckload. Or even a gay lord. And, and if I'm saying something you think I need to explain to folks, let me know. Um, our pellet of goods. So we, there's donations constantly coming in. That's not a full pellet or, or maybe might be, but we break it down. So they can order, we put it on a website. And, you know, when I, I went up there, it was my very first trip was to Omaha. Why? They worked every day. They wow. came in every day to the warehouse. Um, And I just thanked him. And I I was only there for uh, four weeks. And I thanked him. I said, you guys kept the nonprofits going. So what kind of items do they order? Whatever, whatever come comes in. They, there was, when I was there, there was some really nice polo shirts. Um, I think I had a Tommy Hilfiger polo shirts, but at the end of the day, all in, even with shipping, they work out to like $2 and 37 cents to the nonprofit. I mean, so so every fifty dollars of the fair market value, it costs a dollar to either you know manage it, move it. It's most of transportation, especially with the lovely gas prices. Um, so so what's that mean? So for five million dollars worth of market value, costs one hundred thousand dollars to get them throughout the United States wow. to, to to give to their communities. So. Um, you know, there's just books where we move books. We mm. move a ton of books. Some of the more popular items is mattresses are huge. Tempur-Pedics is a partner of ours. They give two truckloads, full two truckloads to uh, a, a breast cancer in October. Um, every month they pick a charity. So, you know, every model with our donors is different. And we, we, we try to partner with them on what they want. Mm-hmm. Again, back to their mission statement, back to how they want their people to work in the communities. All right, Enrique, uh, your comment and then take us on where we're going next. No, well, at the end of the day, we could probably keep talking with you for <laughs> for hours and hours. But we're coming coming to the end of the interview. We'd we'll love to have you back for sure. Uh, my only comment there is that uh, I've have so many good quotes from you, like uh, "never say no to an opportunity." For example, is the the one that comes to mind when you were talking about the coronavirus and what Good Three Hundred and Sixty is doing, and and uh, you you truly have an, an amazing organization. I'm pretty sure you'll be very very successful, and we c- we can't wait to to hear from all the good things they're going to do with them. So, thank you Agreed. for. I guess accepting the position and and uh, where can people find more about? Yeah, Good so so I did give you all my information, but you can um, it's uh, www.good360.org. You can reach me, Romaine, just my first name, Romaine Life and Lettuce, real easy. <laughs> <laughs> at good360.org. That's my personal email. I welcome all emails. Um, I'll give you my cell number is 305-815-9049. And you know what? I have it on my phone. I got to tell you a funny story here. So at UPS, a lot of my peers are like, why do you have your cell number on there? They're going to call you. I'm like, 
I, I want him to call me. And, you know, I want him to call me <laughs> instead of going to social media. Wow. So it was during the pandemic. It was in May, the first in May of 20. And I just saw this customer out in Los Angeles called Chubby Gorilla. <laughs> I can't make that name up. <laughs> so, Gorilla, um, four brothers owned it, made the dispensers that were FDA approved for the vape shops. The vape shops shut down because they were considered non essential. Right. right. So, they flipped it and got the, the uh, suspense as uh, uh, Spencer's for hand sanitizer. Love that. So there was, they were selling. I mean, a lot of, we saw a lot of companies do that. What you know? So he calls me at four forty my time Saturday morning Eastern time, one forty his time. I go, Amon, am I crazy for answering? Or are you crazy for calling? I need your help. I go, what do you got going on? He goes, I got two can- two forty foot containers out in Shanghai. I go, hang on, ding ding ding. I get Seb Chan on. I go, I need you involved, brother. Um, so he got involved immediately and within an hour we had it resolved, but you know, I, I, I felt good that he called me, but then it was kind of an inside joke with my, you know, some of my folks saying like, really y'all, y'all don't, couldn't have got the call before I did. And so it was, it was kind of funny. <laughs> but I love the name, Chubby Girl. Chubby Girl. Never forget those guys. We're going to have to look them up. Um, you know, one last question before we let you go. And then Ricky, I've got a surprise question for you, perhaps, um, for folks out there that may be in position to support uh, a new nonprofit and add to the, um, you know, what they already do. Um, and, and, and there may not be a specific answer, but what, what is good 360 looking for today from a potential new partner and donor or supporter? What what will be a thing, something you could point to there? Great, great question, Scott. So we have... If you go on our website, there's uh, you just go in and say, "Look, I have this to donate." Now you can't. We d- we do not take residential donations. Okay, mm-hmm. this they're they're proper companies, and every every morning we have a class called a huddle call to see what comes in. And I'll just tell you something funny that came in. Mm, it's like three weeks ago. Lidos Lidos is a grocery store some similar to all all these. They're, they're based in Europe. They're trying to get in the U.S. market mm-hmm. in the yep. East Coast. They there are a few in Atlanta, I think. Right? Yeah. 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 They gave us, are you ready for this? 174 helium tanks. Wow. wow. So I'm wow. on the call and I go, hey, I'm with the general for our Toys for Tots. They have a, their parade coming up. Maybe they can use them for balloons. So I met with the general that night. He goes, no, it's just the barracks. The barracks are all button up. He goes, you'll see. He goes, you'll have to get vetted to go in. I'm like, okay. So I report back to the team. I go, ah. Toys for Tots can't use them. Of all things, we got rid of them the next day. We found a nonprofit clown company. No, that's They're- amazing. That's and, amazing. You know, and I'm like researching. I'm like, look, I need to know the weight of them. How many balloons do they feel? Per- and what do they do with them when they're gone? I mean, it's just, you know, basic logistic questions you got to get. So that's how, if people get on our website, they have our small, medium, it doesn't matter. We will help you figure out where to get the goods, where you want them to go. Some people are like, I want them to stay in the United States. I want them to go outside the United States and so forth. Whatever it is, that creative problem problem solving uh, from the robust team over at Good360, helping a ton, many folks, uh, many, many folks in need. So I appreciate what you do, Romaine, and your team. Uh, and again, Good360, those are the numerals, good360.org for more information. And like Romaine said, hey, jump on the site, see uh, how you can get plugged in and help. And for, if there's any nonprofits out there, you can join. You have to be a 501c3. Okay. Um, in part, we do that, all of them, um, because we commit that to the donors that we have legit, you know, we have a compliance department to make sure it gets to the community, not on eBay or so forth. So um, any nonprofit, please get okay. on our website and um, apply to be one of our partners. Love that. Uh, Romaine uh, uh, Seguin, CEO of Good360. Romaine, a pleasure. Now, Thai barbecue may be coming up in October. Next time you're in Atlanta, you got your fan club here. Enrique and I are co-chair uh, chairpersons of your fan of the, of the Romain fan club here in Atlanta. So uh, hopefully we can reconnect soon, but don't go anywhere just yet because Romain 
I think you're going to uh, really dig some, one of the things that um, uh, Enrique and his team have been leading and our supply chain our team have been, have been uh, just tickled and honored to help support. And that is just one project that we could be here all day if we talk about all of, uh, the vectors involved in, but leveraging logistics for Ukraine. So Enrique, in a nutshell, tell us about this and how can folks get involved? Yeah, so this is an initiative that's part of our Vector Global Giving initiative. We, we're we very big in leveraging logistics uh, and logistics with purpose. And so when the war exploded, we felt that it was our responsibility to do something about it. So uh, we started communicating with different organizations uh, around the world, some really good agents and partners we have in Europe, in particular in Poland, uh, Moldova, and some other countries. And the need was huge. There's 4 million refugees in Poland right now. There's 2 million and there's six or seven inside the Ukraine. Uh, what they're going through is horrible. We feel uh, appalled that a dictator could do things like this in 2022. Mm -hmm. So long story short, this is something that we, we take very, very seriously. And so um, talking to everyone, we now have, uh, it started as weekly coordination calls that Scott and the team at Supply Chain now helped us coordinate. And we started gathering different organizations similar to the story that Romain just told about the, the clowns looking for helium, right? So we're matchmaking. So there's people that want to donate. There's people that have sleeping bags, people that have a PPE, people that have things that they can send to Poland. And then we were very, very uh, humbled and thankful for Hapak Lloyd, the steamship line. They came uh -huh. back, they joined the calls and they said, we want to be part of this. And, and they're basically just helping us ship some of these containers at cost and sometimes for free. So, uh, so it's been a, an amazing experience. Uh, the need is still there. We've gone from like the weekly calls to bi-weekly to now it's going to be monthly. The next one's going to be in July 12th. And if you go to our website at www.vectorgl.com, you'll see like a window popping up. Uh, click on that. It will be information about the Ukraine and what we're doing there. And of course, sign up for uh, our next conversation. Um, we would love to have everyone uh, a lot of people actually have joined Bombas. You spoke about them before. Right. Uh, Cotopaxi, some other companies, uh, they're all help trying to help. So it's really just talking about how we can all come together and push harder. Unfortunately, this war will will continue to, I guess, evolve for a lot longer than we would have hoped for. Uh, and the people in that region are going to continue needing our support. It mm -hmm. kind of feels... Scott and Romain, correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like it's it, from like a new cycle. The war in Ukraine has come to a second mm. or third kind of priority. But if you talk to people there, they're at war. They're still at war. So, okay. so we need to make sure that it's, we keep helping we, them. We still did 360. We, we've moved 14 million of uh, fair market value of goods to wow. uh, Poland, Ukraine, Germany. Yeah. And, so Gap gave us 90,000 jackets we moved. Um, we're working with uh, um, uh, the refugee uh, UN of US, United Nations uh, Refugee Coalition. Um, we're moving goods for them. Anyone, we have donors specifically saying we want this moved over to yep. your support. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's, I, I, I'm with you, Eureka. It's it's 2022. It's just hard it's heartbreaking yeah. what these people are going through. It's just, you know, and the children and women are moved out. What happens to these guys? I mean, it's just some of these young men that's 18 can't go because they right. have to defend their yeah. country. I mean, it's just, and, and for the news in this country, to take it third level, it's just crazy. It's yeah, it's unbelievable. But uh, but at the same time, it's actually been very uh, inspiring too, mm. because there's so many people willing to help individuals that are donating containers to organizations. There's so many books for Africa, tons of them, Good 360 and some others. So it's uh, it's been inspiring to see how many people are trying to help out. So agreed. Agreed. Yeah. So folks, uh, check out VectorGL.com if you want to find learn more about this initiative. And hey, you don't have to 
uh, have big, deep pockets or wherewithal, you can sign up and join and just sit back and learn what's yeah. being done and learn about the need, the market intel. We will take that. Those are kindred spirits. Those are very valuable. So check that out. Next meeting is coming up in July. Big thanks. Good, good 360, 14 million uh, in market value donated to folks in need uh, there in, in that region. Um, that is that is logistics with purpose. That's leadership with purpose. Uh, that is deeds, not words. I really appreciate it. both of y'all are wired like that and you live it and you model it. And that, you know, that's been part of the silver lining here, right? The, the, the make it happen leadership that has really shown um, how we can change the world and address things while hoping especially in Ukraine, that the atrocities and cooler heads prevail and, and the, uh, not to be too dramatic, but the evil subsides uh, so mm-hmm. we can we can get to uh, folks that. in suffering. Okay, so big thanks, Romaine. Big thanks to you and the Good360 team. Thanks so much for being here with us. I uh, look forward to, to sharing all the great things that you are doing uh, with our supply chain now, global listening audience. Enrique, always a pleasure to do these episodes. I'll tell you what, y'all are, I think Romaine and Enrique, y'all are maybe separated at birth. Y'all are like cousins. Uh, I think y'all see the world. <laughs> I'm sure we are. <laughs> you see the world very closely. Okay. Well, as long well as you invite me to the barbecue. I will corner, invite you to I'm the barbecue. Happy. <laughs> okay. God bless the both of you. Have a super good week. Take care. Hey, thank you so much, Romaine, Enrique. And, uh, we will talk with you soon. So we're going to wrap here just in two seconds because we got a challenge, folks. Be like Romaine and Enrique. Do good. Give forward. Be the change that's needed. And on that note, we'll see you next time right back here at Supply Chain Now. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being a part of our Supply Chain Now community. Check out all of our programming at SupplyChainNow.com and make sure you subscribe to Supply Chain Now anywhere you listen to podcasts. And follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time on Supply Chain Now. Supply Chain Now.